Hey people, Zar Swamp here and welcome to episode 23 of Ace Attorney Investigations. Last time, we conf we proved that Lance murdered the Oliver Deacon, aka the butler. And we completed the case. You can see Lance, he has this smug face. He's just look all smug with his leather and feather boa. And now we're going to move on to episode 4, Tournament Reminiscence. Okay, Faraday. The young lady who calls herself the G second Yatagarasu. The piece of cloth that she conjured up has taken me back to many years ago. Seven years earlier. Yes, our judge! The only judge in this entire series! Yeah, that's right. I did it. I killed the guy. But it was the great thief Yadagorasu that told me to do it. I asked the defendant, just what exactly are you trying to say? Don't you get it? I know the true identity of the Yadagorasu. The Yadagorasu is the man standing over there at the prosecutor's bench. Are you saying that I'm the Yadagorasu? Don't you dare deny it! You told me to kill him when you're stuck into the embassy! Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Yadagorasu? And that's what they- Mr. Re- Mr. Re- I think I've heard enough of that, are you? Your Honor, please listen to me! I'm telling the truth! You've gotta believe me! It's a gumshoe. Looks like one of gumshoe's relatives. In accordance with the defendant's accusations, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. September 10th, 3.20 p.m. District Court, 3rd room, 3rd floor lobby. Yes! We get the return of Smugsworth! It's almost time for me to enter the courtroom. And so it is my so it is my that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be as a replacement for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. And if you played trials and tribulations, you know for a fact this will not end well for anyone. Since Edgeworth's first trial was with Mia. Edgeworth! Here he's back, Manny! Sir! Have you read over all the documents regarding the tile? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the vault school since substitution is just about to complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I, Manfred von Karma, we will accept nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. To have the chance to die in court at such an early stage of my career, I am honored and proud. As I have watched you over the, your studies, I am giving you this very rare chance. Prove yourself, cross the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion! Yes, sir! That such, that such a legendary prosecutor is watching over my and judging my performance. I have to be perfect in every way. Now, basically, I'm gonna memory. Today's trial should have ended in just one minute. Because the defendant was packed up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. The killer had the gall to say that he only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous is that his claim that the pro that the case was killed burned there, they gave the order. Ha! There they is such a fool! He's been cornered by his very own prey! That would never happen to me! I would only get cornered if I decided to be smug and bring a defendant! And I'm really just pushing my bounds! Sir, are you an acquaintance of Mr. Baron Faraday? Do not insult me, Soul Myers! Why would I be associated with such an imperfect man? <laughs> He's a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense? He once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who could not be brought to court. Those who could not be brought to court. That is nonsense, for no man is above the law. Well, there are always a few exceptions, like Santa. However, there is no reason to even deal with such individuals. Ugh, don't even bring up one that I know. Ugh, I can just imagine that happening to best of court. Like some thought in my eyes. 
A prosecutor is a guardian in the court. One who with no obligation to outside matters. Thus there's no reason to deal with such individuals, I see. Edgeworth, disguising yourself as fair they has will not be forgiven. Have no fear, I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused, prosecutor Brian Faraday, I'll prove the defense guilt. Very good. I have secured an hour of reasons for you to prepare to do just that. Show them all the power of the Volcom! Now, you get to learn the big reason why Edgeworth does not actually wear his prosecutor's badge as lapel, nor any other prosecutor for that matter that we see so far. It is thanks to you that I finally become a prosecutor, sir. It's amusing that you wanted to become a defense attorney, yet became my student. I can't believe that your father just so happened to be killed in an elevator. Oh, and that, this def and that the killer was a tailor with a gun. Ooh. Mm, it is a strange path you have traveled. It is true that I had once wanted to become a defense attorney, but now I am honored and proud to be a prosecutor. I see. Then as a student of mine, I suggest you remember this well. The prosecutor's badge is not to be flaunted. The dignity of a prosecutor lies in the man himself, not in the badge. I understand. I will keep that in mind. Besides, why put holes in your fine garments? It's simply preposterous! Prosecutors must also take pride in their appearance. I will keep this in mind as well. I am constantly having to remind the others at the prosecutor's office of this. It's more fashionable to keep your prosecutor's badge in your pocket! Yes! Manfred is the reason! He's constantly nagging people to wear their prosecutor's badge, put the prosecutor's badge in their pocket because it's more fashionable. Remember this for investigations too! Because this actually because this fact actually makes DL6 a whole lot darker. And I mean way darker. You may think that, oh, such a little statement, that shouldn't really bring that really shouldn't make any context dark, but it does. Just because just remember not what how Manfred is saying this. And then take in mind who exactly Manfred's superior was at that time. Oh, like I said, I'm gonna have so much fun when we get to that moment. In other words, always treat your prosecutor badge with care and honor. I understand, sir. Hey, Sean. So have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I have memorized everything that is written down in the case file. Well, then explain the case to me. It's not because I didn't read the file, of course. I want to see if you really know what you are talking about. Understood. A murder was committed on the September 8th in front of the Condolfian Embassy. The victim, Mr. Dead Man, was a staff member at the Embassy. The defendant in this case, Mr. Mackerel, was held for questioning the night of the incident as he was deemed suspicious. He was quickly placed under arrest for possession of the murder weapon, a gun. Furthermore, at the time of the murder, the great thief Yanagarasu had successfully infiltrated the Kodofian adversary as well. At first, Rao claimed that he himself was the Yanagarasu. That did not, but that uh, he did not kill dead man. I wonder what he expected to gain from such a desperate lie. It's possible that he wanted to go downward in the spotlight if he was found guilty. There's truly no limit to people's insanity. Inanity. I should know. I killed... I killed the guy over a penalty, but I digress. Continue, Edgeworth. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecution presented the security footage that captured the murder. The footage clearly showed Mr. Brown as the murder. The act of Mr. Red firing the gun could be clearly seen from the visitor's gallery. Upon seeing that, the defendant reached his statement and admitted to the murder. I did it because I was told to, by the real Yacht Grassu Baron Ferretti. Hmm. <laughs> That sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. While this may appeal to simply be a murder of a Kodofian embassy staff member, people are actually referring to us as the second KG8 incident. The second KG8 incident? I'm very sorry, sir. I fear I failed to say hard enough. Hmm. <laughs> well, even among the police, it's information that only a select few are privy to. Of course, I know, because I am perfect in all regards. Could you please enlighten me, sir? Well, like I said, I find it funny how Manfred is pretty much the same, regardless, he does not age. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if Manfred came out of the womb looking like that. Sir, what do you mean by the second KG8 is it? In order for me to tell you that, you must first learn about the original kids. Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. Why did it have a- Why does it have a Garfield- Why does it have a Marmaduke comic? Oh, can't! And then- I recall the guy. Gaunt, why did you replace the K- Gaunt, why did you replace the KG engine with your- Why do I have your- Why do I have your mama do comic? Man, man, 
Bernie! Glad to see you found my Marmaduke comic! I was starting to get freaked out. All I saw in my Marmaduke collection was this. All I saw on my table was just this weird newspaper article from the KG8 incident. I have to tell you, I was a little, I was a little shooken up. I have to say. You have heard of the Amano Group scandal before, correct? Yes, I have. The secretary of Ernest Amano, the Amano Group's director, was arrested under suspicion of smuggling. Correct. CCU was an employee of the Amano Group and the sole witness to the smuggling operation. It was she who brought the card to light. Our Miss Yu was silenced before she could testify in court. Wasn't a Kadovian emissary staff member arrested for the murder? Yes, a Kadovian by the name of Manny Cochran was the suspect. No relation to me, of course. Manny, you're a good friend! You're both Manny's! However, due to a lack of evidence, the case was went unsolved. Lack of evidence? Ha! If only I was in charge of the case, I would have done everything my power to prove his guilt! To make sure that all criminals are found guilty, my mentor really is dedicated. I would have forged the best evidence in the land! Faraday was the prosecutor of that case then, and he was as pathetic as ever! Mr. Faraday was in charge of the KGA incident as well. That's right! And now, once again, the victim of the case you are currently assigned to was someone who was eligible to testify against the smuggling organization. And just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was to testify. Was... wait, was that murdered to testify before he could, te could testify? You're catching on! The victim was murdered just before the day in court against the smuggling op organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did in the KG8 incident. So that's why it's being called the second KG8 incident. Yes. There's, there's one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? The so-called noble thief that is sending everyone into an uproar. The great thief of the Garasu. Not the Garasu, I better find out more. I want to check out the things. A model of the quarters. Pretty well constructed. Hmm, hands in a piece. Don't tell me this thing transforms. And I wonder for what other purpose could they have been made? Yes, the courthouse is a giant transforming robot. Man, man this, this is so good. I could give a whole gallon. I never heard of water that tastes that good. Yeah, I'll give him a minute. Does he plan on gulping an entire reservoir dry? Excuse me, madam, but is something the matter? I just thought someone would have brought hors d'oeuvres by now. But, but this is a cold house! It would be quite atypical to provide hors d'oeuvres here. Are you sure someone poured me a fresh cup of coffee last time I was here? What the heck does she think a cold house is for? Or if these great daddy made all of these! Awesome, but didn't you get fired if you made them? If you made them? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. I spent the same amount of money on this model as it built the co cost to build the real thing. My boss wasn't very happy with me. <laughs> hey, Daddy, didn't you say you built a secret mechanism inside of it? <laughs> I'll tell you about it someday when you're older. A secret mechanism? Maybe it's installed as payback for getting fired. It could be trouble. Now I'm curious. Hmm, a luxurious and beautiful leather sofa. I must say, every part of this courthouse is meticulously well kept. Although the positioning of the sofa puts one under the direct gaze of the churches. Every judge in this quarter's history has had quite the beard. And has gallantly parted with the, the beloved head of hair, I see. Being a judge must be a very stressful career. <laughs> a bookshop, huh? Compendi compendium of laws for beginners. I don't have the time to read this and second guess myself now! Is it true that the Yellow Grass who showed up at the Kadopian Embassy? What could he or she have been after? Hmm. No doubt to see any suspicious accounting, rec accounting records and release them publicly, or more likely, see secrets on the Kadopian Embassy itself. Since the item that the Yellow Grass was opened this one there was sent to the police. What was it that the Yellow Grass sent to the police? I don't know the details. Anything related to the Yellow Grass was getting the top secret treatment. Still, I find it very ironic. I find it ironic that they would not include me, the perfect prosecutor, in on this. I could have cracked this case in five minutes. I know you could, sir. You damn well right know I could. By during the story night of the police, it was proof positive that the Yotagasu had infiltrated the embassy on the same day that the staff member was killed. 
Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? That would have... That would have to be the first time the Agarasu has left Evansbank, correct? Yes, indeed. If you wish to learn more about the other Garasu, let's get to us Faraday. Mr. Faraday? He happens to be the prosecutor in charge of the other Garasu case as well. Him and his horrible scarf! What does he think his scarf is better than my cravat? He's the prosecutor in charge of both the cage, the incident, and the other Garasu case. Mr. Faraday, Mr. Faraday really has a lot on his plate. What is it, little girl? You're scary, mister. Hmm. You look like a vampire. Are you Dracula? I'm not Dracula. Are you sure? I'm very sure. Did you, did you need something? Um, I want to trade these coins with you. Yes, and then we get little K. First of all, dive court is a maze, but it looks like you've got exactly a dollar. Is this what you want? And we get little K. Thanks, that's exactly what I needed. Could that child be here to watch the trial? How oh, disrespectful a child like that to be running around inside the courthouse! Does no one have respect for this country's judicial system anymore? Do you, coming from you, Manfred, the guy who literally says, who literally contrives, boss, harasses judges? Who strong arms judges? The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is complete. What? You? Do you even know how much time there is left before the trial resumes? And I'm dealing with- and, and this is Miles' first child! He's not my blood relative! I'm working with a defense attorney, Mutt! He could mess it up and he could ruin my reputation as a result! I- I'm, I, I'm so sorry! I can have you mobbing up this glass and they're protecting it in an instant! Pack hot! It's no bother, sir. Not being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. <laughs> a proud one you are. You've learned well, Miles. You had better collect the evidence for that and prepare yourself. It's time for your debut, Edgeworth. September 10th, 4 o'clock p.m. District Court, courtroom number 3. Oh my gosh, it's a shame that we didn't get Manfred as the first, as Edgeworth's partner, as Edgeworth's assistant for the child. That would have been a like golden. Just what's going on? Why isn't Verde here yet? How is it possible that the defense is not prepared either yet? I actually... Actually, you think that Manfred would have been like... I mean, I can understand the defense attorney. I mean, they are lowly scum who can barely read, let alone who can pro defend, but... Come on, this is just rude. Well, if, where is Mr. Faraday? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah, we get to see the judge standing for once. Oh, you must be the one Mr. Von Karma recommended. I hear this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. I don't care about your grandson! Sir, sir, it looks like the trial is about to resume, however. Yes, it will be all but impossible to prove the witness a liar. Without the evidence for Thursday! What is that bastard blasted buffoon up to? It's an emergency! It's an emergency, sorry! Can't you just push this people out of the way? Silence! Who gonna shut me door yelling in the sacred hall of law? Except when I yell! Bailiff, remove that mat in the corner at once! P please! Wait! You have to listen to me! There's an emergency! Defend lobby number two! My Mr. Van and defendant! The two of them! They're, they're both dead, your honor! What? 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 September 10th, 10, court, District Court Hallway. Stay back. Uh. No one's allowed on the crime scene. Period. Who does this oddball think he is? This is becoming quite the hotspot. Isn't she Mr. Rell's defense attorney? 
Hey, you! No running in the hallway, pal! And who are you to tell me what to do? As you can see, this was before Gumshoe started the Church of Edgeworth. I'll never find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil discourse! Vending machine! Interesting. They're selling special quarantine food products here. Many of them seem sort of troublesome and suspicious. Objection, I suppose. I'm a drink vending machine. Ah! Now is not the time to be pondering what kind of drink I want! Fire extinguisher. If one were to be hit in the head with this, I suppose the victim would lose a memory or two. But it's not as though I'd ever be so foolish as to be struck by one of these. I love how Edgeworth, even in the past, lands Phoenix. A post of the judge, the slogan of some sort. Every strike of my gal brings the truth close to me, and my hair falls away. Is this a promotion poster for the court or a hair growth product? This sofa looks like it's seen its fair share of use. And it looks like another part of the courthouse is visible from the window. Ah! My eyes have looked with my reflection eyes in the barred window. As soon as I'm karma, I refuse to back down! I won. Excuse me, but who are you? Detective Tyrell Bad. Homicide. I was informed that the situation came as quickly as possible. Eh, hey, yes, Tyrell Bad, aka Detective Badass. As my one friend slash co writer likes to call him. So, how did you arrive and inspect the body before I did? Faraday requested for me to testify in the trial. Plain and simple. Mr. Faraday requested that you be here. Just showing that off make you feel like a big, strong prosecutor. Uh, of course not! I was simply pro proving my title and pro pro as my title to prosecutor to you. I see, but most prosecutors don't go around flaunting those things. It's like a detective walking around outside with his badge flashing in the sunlight. Show that off too much, and before you know it, you'll be angry, noble, even angry criminals. That would definitely be a problem! Detective Bad, I'd like to ask you about this piece of evidence. Could you please pay attention? <laughs> I'm listening, but I've got nothing to say. End of story. Very well. Why didn't you say that in the first place? I've already contacted HQ about the situation. I've got nothing to say to you, kid. KID! I'm Mr. Faraday substituted today's trial. Therefore, I insist that you update me on the situation. I, I can't back down here. I have a right to know. And plus, this is a mere detective. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to adults, kid? Is he threatening me? Yes. Oh, God! He's going for his gun! It, it's just a mirror. How dare he trick me like that? Faraday was stabbed to death with some kind of blade, and he had a gun in his hand. The other man, or Mr. Mackerel, was shot and killed. He was found holding a bloody knife in his hand. Was there anyone else who went to defend lobby number two? Yeah, that big lug over there. His name's Gumbich. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then... They must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence! This guy is really testing my patience! Why was I not informed that you were going to test my in court? Homicides are my only gig. The Yachty roster case is also one of my assignments. So you were called upon the, to comment on the Yachty Grosser's characteristics in order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was the Yachty Grosser winner. Well, well, looks like you might have a brain after on that head of yours, but son. Son, I'm not your son, pops! Well, you're not, well, I'm not your pops, boy. Well, I'm not your boy, old man! You call me old again, and I'll say that you won't live long enough to be old, boy. Now, we'll talk to you, aka a character who's very, very new. Do, do you have a minute? You know, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know, especially at a time like this. Ah, I apologize for not introducing myself before bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Faraday's place in court. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. 
So fairly substitute is a newbie, huh? I'll have you know, madam, that I stayed under Mandy Manfred von Karma. I have his finger waggle sprite. Do not take me for that naive novice. I am not a novice bimbo. <laughs> Do not take me for some naive novice. Gallantly presents the facts. <laughs> ah, thanks for the great life, but try not to make me laugh too much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of the sort. <laughs> Just kidding. I was giving you around. Otherwise, you know who I'm. Um, uh, my name is Kalista Yu. And if you tell the truth, then we have got to go head to hide in the coal. Ah, but of course, I have heard much about you, Miss Yu. Yes, basically, you, as you can tell, is supposed to be essentially like an inverse Edgeworth, essentially. Green clothing, likes to toy around, defense attorney. So, of course, I'm trying to give her some cockney, more cockney British voice. I'm like, Kay, who is getting something, I don't know. Oh, but of course, I heard something about you, your regular Shakespeare. D did I say something funny? I'd like you to update me on the situation, but I don't really know anything. Why did you try talking to the detective over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? <laughs> Oh, what's so funny? It's just that the way you speak is so tactless. The person I was going against the court until only a little while ago was murdered. It's not like I should go back into the court pretending as though nothing happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine, don't worry about it. It's a shame that we would not be able to face each other. It was to be, it was to be my first round too. Oh, it was a declaration of war. How nice is it? be young and carefree. And what a nice squeaky clean badge you got there. I'm jealous. I'm sure it's gleam of dollar of time with experience. <laughs> Are you saying your reputation will also tarnish you with time with it? <clears throat> That's not what I meant. <laughs> you, uh, you just can't avoid dumb things in life. I never allow my badge or my reputation to become tarnished. Until two years later. Three years later. Actually, two SO9. Yes, we get little K. K is little girl with balloon. The judge. He's literally just the judge. This is the first time the judge actually has a place in the court record, funny enough. Yes, we get bad. Yeah, yeah. Bad was actually face to face with us in an A story game. It would be quite the intimidating experience. And you. And let's talk to Gumshoe. It's like, it's this epic meeting. And you are? Who, me? Hey, pal! It's coming, cuz he tells him when your name is before asking this. Mm, point taken, my name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a district prosecutor. A prosecutor? I know, see, a prosecutor as young as you, pal! And thus, the first page in the Gospel of Edgeworth was written by Gumshoe. I told you my name, now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick comes you, and just recently I achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a dream, it's what I was born to do. Wait, maybe I should check and make sure I'm not really in some crazy dream voice. This detective is entirely too excited to have he had a murder scene. You mentioned that you've only recently become a detective, did you not? You've got it, I'm a brand squeaking new detective. So that means you've probably never seen a real prosecutor's badge, right? If you so desire to see one, I might be able to make your day. You don't have to go through the trouble, pal, because a real man has a police badge. And someday I'm going to become an ace detective just like Detective Bad! Ah, uh, oh, I'm dancing the wrong belt! Forget it, detective. Yeah, so essentially, gum. So essentially. Mark Meekins indirectly wants to become Detective Bad. That's just hilarious. So, Detective Gamshoe, would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know that I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that, but I can cut your pay! Pay cut! Psh, first of many. But it would be who of you to know to fill me on what you know. Well, you're proud one for such a young aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bad's the one charge. So you're just gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? And for me, I was going to the door of the defense lobby number two. So 
you want the guard to tell. Do you notice anything strange while you are on duty? What? We got my guns and I got froze! You're a detective and you need to see gunshot schedules that much? And again, I can hardly claim to not know what it's like here when at close range. Then Detective Bad came running to the scene! He went to lobby duty together, both men were lying there dead! Is that everything? Mm, yeah, that's it! I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single beep of the struggle! Interesting. Other than the gunshot, he didn't hear a single sound coming out of commotion. Miss Yu! There's someone here who wishes to see you! Who is it? A Cadolphian Embassy sat member by the name of Man Cochran! He? What's going on? Detective Bad, Miss Yu's moves just changed all of a sudden. Wait a second. Was it Manny Cochran? I'll be right there. It's nice to see you again, Miss Yu. Why are you here? I have no desire to ever see. I have no desire to ever see you again. No, no. Actually, would you mind sitting outside for a brief chat? Fine, let's go. Maverick sees him. He's like, I love Maverick's page. It speeds up. Bud. Fun, come on. It's been a long time. Forging the app. For forcing confessions lately. Shut up! You know I have. I knew you would show up. Do when they are the gods involved, and they see this case no exception. Or when you wish to just ruin my life. Do you know Detective Bad, sir? Unfortunately, he's like an old blood on that never leaves the scene of a crime. If only he would be at a promotion and move on, and lose the w and lose this these wonderful heart-to-heart -heart chats, prosecutor von Karma. I think not. Hits the crime scene where Detective is most useful and effective. <laughs> it's not like I don't know that. Moving on though, Bad. That man might just pass by. Was he not the suspect from the KGA incident? Why is he not in jail? So I was right. Just what is that man doing wandering around here? We'll answer that question next time. Anyways, I really appreciate these. I'm going to watch this episode. You're great. You hope you come back for the next one. If you like the video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. And with that, I'll see you later. Bye.